Get ready. Get set. Hold on. It's time for the Mouth of the Two Shock Show. Good morning. Welcome. It is Thursday, July 17th. Welcome. Ah, so much, so much going on. Where to start? Where to start? Well, it's been an eventful week, boys and girls, and ladies and gentlemen. And uh, all kinds of things going on here. Um, first of all, we've we've had uh, new news with uh, Bo Bergdahl and everybody turning their attention to uh, the, the plight and, and story of one man. And uh, that kind of taking some of the attention away from go, what's going on down at the border. And even within that, there's been plenty of uh, distractions where people are turning their attention to a man who, uh, using his own money to do some charity work for these kids, making sure that they are comfortable and well taken care of and taken care of humanely before being sent back where they belong, that being their their home countries. So that was used as a little bit of an obfuscation there, and we've kind of looked at that this week. And we've looked at a whole bunch of stuff involving attacks against the Second Amendment and all sorts of things. And this is Thursday. The the week's winding down. One more day to go, and that's tomorrow. So, speaking of tomorrow, and speaking of illegal immigration and border security, and this wave of, uh, of children coming across the border. Across the nation, several... Uh, local Tea Party groups and 912 groups and Liberty groups, etc. are kind of banding together as they tend to do when they find common causes and doing some protests on, uh, on most of them on Saturday uh, doing protests and demonstrations against uh, current immigration policy and lack of proper enforcement and wastes of, uh, of federal money which it really isn't when you think about that this is national defense when you're talking uh, border security, but the mismanagement of those funds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they're kind of gathering uh, uh, across the country on Saturday with the exception of one small city in one dinky state, this itty bitty little state, one that's almost insignificant. This the fact Despite the fact that nearly 50% of the jobs created on a month-to-month -month basis are done by this tiny little state. So it's rather insignificant. And this city has one of the lowest unemployment rates in the country. So it's rather insignificant. We're talking about San Antonio, Texas. The San Antonio, the various... San Antonio Tea Parties, of which there are several, are kind of coming together and have a uh, big rally planned for tomorrow. That's February, July, July 8, 18th. Friday, July 18th. At, uh, from 11 to 4 p.m., if you are so inclined to go and grab some banners and go and peacefully and respectfully demonstrate and express your, your First Amendment rights. They've already set it up and got the permits, and you go and uh, meet up with them at uh, 127 Navarro Street uh, here in San Antonio. And if you're from somewhere in, in this, this small dinky, you can drive across it in uh, well, almost 12 hours. In fact, from Corpus Christi to El Paso, it's probably closer to 16. Dickey State, small state. You could drive from Georgia to Chicago, from Atlanta, Georgia to Chicago, in less time than it takes to just go across this very small state of Texas. But if you're within uh, 
with with a uh, comfortable driving range and you have the day off or want can some time can take the day off and desire to do so go ahead and gather at 127 Navarro Street in San Antonio and link up with these groups and uh, express your first amendment rights and if you happen to be opposed to what they stand for I'm sure that there's some counter demonstration going on um, just please people keep it peaceful let your voice be heard let the politicians and the policymakers and the bureaucrats and the uh, the union goons and thugs that run the bureaucrats behind in the shadows let them know what your thoughts are peacefully and go ahead and express them and as you do so remember these kids are being used as pl political pawns from all different directions and the last thing they need is to be treated by as political pawns by us we need to stand up for the fact they shouldn't be here and the fact that people are sending them here and those people need to stop they need to be treated properly here uh, at least medically so that it doesn't spread disease to our people they need to be treated humanely because we're not Nazi Germany we're not um, Saddam era Iraq we don't treat people like that we need to treat them as Americans treat people um, there's no reason why we should treat these kids who have not been convicted of any crime as of yet worse than we treat our prisoners our murderers and our rapists that we have locked up in jail so keep that in mind people these are kids many of which did illegal things yes in coming across the border but not necessarily of their own free will some of them maybe some of them maybe not some of them may have been abducted and drug across the border against their will completely so just keep that in mind as you let your voice be heard about the your side of the, the policies that are being enacted or not enacted um, or executed or not executed by our executive bureaucracies and 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 what laws have been passed by Congress etc so that's what we have kind of going on here in uh, in the small dinky little dot on a map known as Texas And of course, uh, yesterday I spoke of other things, Texas linked, um, because one of our representatives from the state of Texas, I want to say, and I have to relook, I have to look this up, and somebody can correct me, uh, either in comments under the podcast or they, you can call them in right now at five two zero two two six eight five six seven, and uh, if you have better information, but I think. Henry Quellar is a representative from District 24, whichever district number it, it is, though. It's eastern San Antonio, down through a corridor and down to the border, a portion of the Rio Grande Valley uh, near McAllen and, and uh, San Juan, that area. So he's the, the congressman. Ironically, he's, he's my congressman. And my sisters and my sister lives down in McAllen and um, up here in uh, in an area near the San Antonio general metro area so he kind of has a, a long stretch area but he and uh, the senior senator um, both penned uh, what's being called the Humane Act and kind of put it into and uh, they're, they're, it's being voted on by both houses in Congress and uh, at first pass through it looks like a great thing it looks like it's going to expedite a lot of the uh, the red tape and the processes for dealing with these children but there's fine print in that bill and some of that fine print should uh, raise some eyebrows and raise some concerns so go ahead and take a look at it before you just go sign off and say I like it or I don't like it um, and I'm sure that that part of it comes as compromises because this was written by a uh, a liberal Democrat um, Henry Henry Cuellar, Cuellar I can I don't speak Spanish so I hope I'm not butchering his name too much um, and uh, and as well as a 
somewhat conservative. Depends on what, what flavor his coffee is in the morning. But uh, Senator John Cornyn, they work together to uh, pen this bill and sponsor it. So I'm sure there are little compromises in there from one or the other. But some of these so-called compromises are actually evolving into giving a little bit too much power to the executive branch that the executive branch should not be able to make these decisions. There should be legislation. According to the Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, immigration law is solely the responsibility of Congress. They can't delegate that authority to make those decisions to, uh, to the executive branch. They are solely legislative. So with that in mind, you know, keep the Constitution in mind as you read through that bill and, and wonder what kind of powers our, uh, our legis legislators are willing to just give up to the executive branch instead of keeping it co-equal branches of government, kind of making one in power and other ones diminished. And speaking of one having too much power and other ones being diminished or having them be co-equal, yesterday, or well, it actually aired the day prior, but it was released online, the, uh, the webcast of it. Uh, C-SPAN had a special with... Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the uh, the representative. He's another representative here from Texas, but he was on uh, to talk about the lawsuit that Speaker Boner Boehner, Boehner, to say it in German, Boehner, has filed against Obama, and how he's actually stripped back to uh, to actually go against just the uh, the the things involving the 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 PPACA. Uh, otherwise known as Obamacare, um, when there were so many other things that could have been named in the lawsuit as well. And it was a very interesting um, show to watch. We get a chance to go over on the uh, C-SPAN site and look it up and read it. It's, uh, it's worth your time. It's about 45 minutes long. One thing to note, though, is many of the callers or other people who came in and to... to Ask questions or make comments to the uh, to the guest, the representative from Texas, who is who has joined the suit. A lot of the comments had nothing to do with the lawsuit. They were insults. I have to wake up every day and deal with listening to people like you who just hate our president and things like that. Nothing constructive to say, no facts, no legitimate criticisms, just a bunch of ad hominems. You're a nasty conservative. You just don't want people to get free stuff that somebody has to pay for, but it's not me. So I don't care. Just give me my free stuff. And you're a bad person because you don't want to give me all your stuff that you paid for and give it to me for free. Even though I sat on my butt and ate bonbons. You're a poo-poo head. Yeah, people like that, mm, they're the exact slaves that the Democrat Party has made and keeps enslaved to government entitlements. Well, they're not entitlements, handouts. And the same people, or many of those same people, are seeing those handouts possibly having to become scaled back a bit because... We've got this crisis at the border, and they're outraged. How dare you take food out of my child's mouths that, that you're supposed to be giving me for free, and instead giving it to these, ch these children who are in detention camps for free? Uh, you, you're about to hear a microphone drop. Either way. It's not your food. It's not the government's food. It's the taxpayer's food. It'd be best if taxpayer money didn't go to food in the first place and it stayed within the private charities realm. But if it's not yours, you can't complain about about who it's given to. If you're 
have have your hand out begging for free crap, begging for free stuff. You're a beggar. You can't be a chooser. And you get what you get. And you like it. You don't like it. Get a job. Then you'll be paying taxes. And maybe your vote will actually count. At least, you know, in public opinion. 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 Because you're not contributing. You're just a taker. And that is just uh, just my opinion from my mouth to your ears. Um, like it or not, tell me about it down in the comments under the podcast. Or again, you can call in. Uh, that's uh, area code 520 226 8567. So, yeah, you can go ahead and uh, give me a call if you so desire. And let me know uh, what you think. Or leave the comments down under the podcast if you're not listening to this live. Now, I'm interested in your thoughts. I may or may not reply. And if you're vulgar and don't have conceit, c- concise well thought out responses and you just call me a poo poo head I may delete your comment because I want thought I want facts I want intelligent discourse not emotive not emotional if you can give me that agree or disagree we can discuss and that's how we get information out and get the whole story out, both sides of it, for everybody to look at. And I'm all about getting, I'm all about that. So, anyway, we were talking about uh, about the Boehner suit. And I kind of got off on a tangent there. So that we had these negative comments going to this, uh, this representative during the C-SPAN show. Well, let's throw a little bit of more interesting uh, um, to-dos activities in with uh, in the mix here on this whole um, lawsuit with Boehner thing. Doctor D, um, that's his his known plum, known to plume, his pen name over at BuzzPo, wrote a good little article here called, uh, entitled, Prominent Liberal Professor Joins Republican Effort to Sue Obama. Let that sink in. A liberal, a left-wing, an oligarch professor is joining the right side in this lawsuit. And uh, Dr. D writes, he, he actually quotes the Washington Times, a prominent law professor and avowed supporter of the Obama White House will tell the House on Wednesday that the president has created one of the biggest constitutional crises in the country's history and will endorse House Republicans' effort to sue and rein him in. Interesting. This professor's name, Jonathan Turley law professor over at George Washington University and has uh, has been a long-term supporter of of uh, Obama but he's seeing things and thinking maybe Obama has has stepped over his lines just one too many times and again uh, quoting I think it's the Washington Times Dr. D states here or the Washington Times did rather what we are witnessing today is one of the greatest challenges to our constitutional system in the history of this country. This is coming from a liberal, from a socialist, from an oligarch, from a left winger, thinks Obama's going too far and supports this lawsuit. That this sends a message to the American people. Come on, even when people on both sides of the aisle are saying, Hey, you're gone too far. You're ignoring the Constitution. You are not a king. You you know, you need to be reined in. 
you, you step, you put your toes over the line, they're about to get chopped off. You better back up. It says something here. And uh, to actually quote Dr. D instead of just him quoting Washington Times, Dr. Dr. D writes in his BuzzPo article, the House Republicans have been looking for ways to rein in Obama's power. Despite Obama, Obama's, they have gotten nowhere with the Democratic-controlled Senate. While some Democrats call the lawsuit a stunt, other liberals, like Turley, see it as legal and appropriate. The lawsuit is focused on the employer mandate that is part of the Affordable Care Act. Claiming that he could use discretion on what to enforce in regards to the law, Obama ignored key dates and penalties of the law. Republicans argue that the president does not get to pick and choose what parts of any law he will or will not enforce. And Turley then testified before Congress, and there's a uh, a video embedded in the uh, in the story, or a couple of in, uh, videos embedded in there that uh, you can go over to buzzpo.com and take a look and watch those videos and read all of Dr. D's great work on this article as well as his other articles. But interesting, when you have prominent uh, people on the left side kind of taking a look at the way things are going on with this presidency and this administration and going, hey, wait a minute, there, there's a line that, that has been crossed and it needs to stop. Speaking about crossing lines, again over at BuzzPo, there's an article with a big red circle with a line through it as the uh, featured image. And evidently, the House of Representatives thinks that uh, the IRS overstepped its, uh, its bounds in giving out bonuses and paying for extravagant conferences. You know, this amid, of course, the bid targeting scandal that's ongoing. And this was written by, uh, it seems like once a day I have something to, to look at over here at BuzzPo that was written by Stephen Ale. Um, great, uh, great contributor over there at BuzzPo. Really, really well worth your time to, to kind of look at all of his stories, agree or disagree with kind of his take on things. He still writes in an interesting manner that, you know, you get the facts out of it and you can make up your own mind. It just so happens I tend to agree with a lot of what he says. You may or may not, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't take a look and read it because the facts are there to look at. You can weed out whatever bias is in there and to make up your own mind. You may find that you end up agreeing with him in the end. So, with that in mind, uh, according to, uh, to, to Stephen Ale, back in April of 2013, the IRS admitted to targeting conservative applications for tax-free status. Yes, we know this is his old news. Now, where the lowest learner emails are, that's still a big mystery. Anyway, I continue, uh, Steve L. continues, in July of 2014, the Republican House has targeted the IRS. Having already caught the IRS's budget by $1.1 billion, the House continued its onslaught on the IRS by passing amendments prohibiting the IRS from granting bonuses to employees and from holding conferences. One conference last year cost taxpayers $4 million. Mm. The white. Uh, you look at uh, at this. It almost seems like there's a a word that got skipped here. But anyway, I'm going to assume he says the White House has threatened to veto the House bill, which delivers a cut of 1.5 billion from the uh, IRS budget, and is 2.5 billion less than Obama has requested. Boo hoo. I want the big sucker. All we can afford is a little one. I'm going to throw a fit if you don't give me the big one. Sorry, I just have to go off on the whole temper tantrum thing here of want, want, gimme, gimme, gimme here. But anyway, that's a reduction. That $2.5 billion less is a reduction of 20% or more. Um, and as Steve Ellis states, I believe the veto threat is a bluff. Obama, Obama is all about politics and the last thing he needs before the 2014 elections is to try to make the case that Republicans are responsible for shutting down the IRS if anything it would make voters more likely to vote Republican 
How about that? People don't like the tax man. News alert. Yeah. So think about that. And I think Steve Al is onto something there. And uh, Steve Al continues on with the rest of the article talking about these uh, happenings and giving some good quotes and talking about some of the bonuses that went out there. Take a look at that article. Read through it. Very, very interesting. Very, very well read. There's some snark in there, not just the the stuff I added, but some of his original snark that makes it kind of entertaining. Or actually makes it entertaining. Really good to read and informative. So go ahead and go and take a look. Once again, it's over at buzzpo.com. And again, over at buzzpo. Wanna kind of well before we get into this because this is Second Amendment stuff. I want to go and talk about a state that has the Second Amendment almost right, almost right. I'm gonna I'm talking about Arizona. Arizona had some some border issues a couple of years ago. Of course, they still have them now with everything going on. But those border issues involved uh, coyotes, and I'm talking the four-legged kind. I'm talking the two-legged kind that do uh, um, human trafficking and sex slavery. Um, usually, they're connected with drug cartels, and they assassinated a rancher named Robert Krentz down there, and that, of course, spawned a couple of major things to happen in Arizona. One was the passage of uh, of SB 1070, which is relatively famous, that was uh, Arizona's. You will, en- you know, we will enforce immigration law. Law. Um, they're not adding. They really didn't add any new immigration laws to the federal ones. All they said is we're going to actually enforce them. Um, they're already on the books, so we're going to enforce them. That was the majority of what the the law was about. Did act. Did enact a couple of things in there that uh, they didn't like. Things such as. If a cop, you know, stops somebody under suspicion, they they have to run a uh, a background check to see if the person's a citizen. It's not a up to discretion anymore. It became a you will you know if you if you suspect that they're not a U.S. citizen, if they don't don't present a driver's license and a military ID card or something or whatever the case might be, you know, you, you might be behoove you to go and check to see if the person. Um, is a U.S. citizen, especially if the ID card, are, uh, I can speak this morning, the ID card they uh, hand the police officer looks uh, faked, forged, or fraudulent, then it really needs to be investigated as a potential illegal. You know, that was the, that was a real only addition in there that got uh, got people's panties in a bunch. And then, of course, the the tidy whities went into a twist when the whole you need to prove that you're a U.S. citizen in order to vote thing came up, too. Well, that's already federal law, whether people like it or not. It's just how it's enacted along uh, by the states, because states get to establish their own electoral law and policies and procedures. So, of course, federally, people's tidy whities and panties got all knotted up over that one. But the other... Uh, legislation that got passed rather quickly in Arizona after that happened was Arizona went constitutional carry when it comes to firearms which means if you can legally own it now mind you if you're a convicted felon still on parole you can't legally own a firearm so if you can legally own the firearm you can carry the firearm and that means you can carry it Open it in a holster or concealed. If it's a rifle, you can carry it on your back. There's certain rules on how you can carry it. You can't walk around with your finger on the trigger and the weapon uh, on fire instead of safe and pointing, brandishing it at people. No, no, you can't do that. That's That would be called threatening. That would be called, um, legally it's called assault with a deadly weapon. And it, so you've, you're, you're threatened, you're brandished. But you can walk around with it on your back. You can even have it loaded and on your back. You can have it loaded and chambered and have it on your back. But there's certain limits to what you can do and how many actions it takes for you to take it from where it's sitting to where it's actually being employed against a threat. 
um, and that's to keep people from accidentally doing stupid things and out of anger doing really really dumb things and breaking the law it requires several steps there where you, during which you get a chance to think about your actions before you do something really really dumb a weapon should never be used in an offense unless you are in the military and under orders and doing you know good works that way if you're you're a private citizen or even if you're a police officer for that matter your weapon should only come out in self-defense or defense of an innocent or a defenseless or a helpless or um, a weaker person who, who needs to be defended and you're not attacking somebody to kill them you are doing a last ditch effort a la um, worst case scenario uh, final defensive act to stop the criminal act or the harm that was going to go against either yourself or your family member or that the defenseless or the innocent because there's there was no other way to stop the criminal act um, and it's you, you always use the least amount of force necessary and lawful gun owners know all this um, it's the ones who are not lawful who don't care about that so Arizona being very very smart passed a constitutional carry and basically made their state laws right in line with the US Constitution if you can legally own it you can legally carry it with some minor exceptions which of course is a great thing if that all came out from a, a passport or crisis and kind of interesting how those things go but uh, other things going on in Arizona back in congressional district 2 which covers cochise county and parts of pima county to include uh portions of uh of tucson there's a, a congressional race going on and incumbent ron barber who has barely won every single one of his elections so far just barely by a, a very slender margin is going to be facing one of uh one of three people and one of those people he faced before, and it was Martha McSally, and he's beat her a couple of times already. And now he's going to uh, face whoever wins the primary. And right now the primary, originally McSally had a, had a huge lead, but it's shrinking daily. And Martha McSally, there in Arizona, so far has been refusing to enter a debate because she really doesn't want to take a stance on any issue and there's a lot of allegations on here uh, out there about her and rumors and I'm not going to test any of those um, with the exception of one rumor which I've seen some evidence that very much indicates it could be true again this would be good for a court of law where she, it could actually be weighed by several people instead of just one person's opinion but it appeared back during the special election that Ron Barber won when he beat Jesse Kelly. The reason why Ron Barber won against Jesse, against Jesse Kelly is because Martha McSally went around and told people, stay home. Because if Jesse Kelly wins, I, can't, I won't be able to beat him. But if he loses, I can beat Ron Barber. And of course, she couldn't beat Ron Barber. But she had people stay home. And she claimed because Jesse Kelly was a Marine and he was enlisted, never mind he was a non commissioned officer, emphasis on the word officer, of a ground force where people actually have to lead other people, not just be in command of an aircraft like Martha McSally was. But uh, she questioned Jesse Kelly's leadership ability. You know, Martha, I just want to give you one little piece of info. I will guarantee that 99.9% .9 of the time, when you tell an airplane go left and turn its little yoke, it's going to go left. And when you tell it to go right and turn its little yoke, it'll go right. People are a little bit different. When you tell somebody to go left, a lot of times they're going to look at you and say, why? Tell them to go right. They're going to look at you and say, why? And if you don't have an answer for them, 
that's going to be hard to get them to do it. You have to make them want to do it without telling them what to do, without pulling on a yoke. People have brains. Jesse Kelly had to engage people. He had to lead people. I know it's hard for you to understand because you were an officer in command of an aircraft in the Air Force. But he was capable of leading. But whatever case might be, whether McSally actually made those allegations or not, Jesse Kelly lost to Ron Barber. Well, right now, Martha McSally is facing off against a fellow Air Force uh, alumni, a retiree, and he's a non-commissioned officer who actually had to lead people and has been very successful in leading people after leaving the military, but I'm talking, of course, of uh, Chuck Wooten. And I have, from a local radio station, I have uh, a little clip here. Uh, that's the local radio station in Arizona there. A little clip here for uh, from somebody's endorsement of Mr. Chuck Wooten, who's running against McSally, and uh, could possibly, fingers crossed, uh, beat her. But we'll see what the voters um, decide. Arizona families are hurting, and the Constitution is under constant attack. We need a leader who will fight against injustice, regardless of which party he finds it in. That's why The Josh Bernstein Show proudly endorses retired Air Force Chief Master Sergeant Chuck Wooten for Congress. Chuck Wooten will go to Washington to represent we the people, not we the politicians. Chuck Wooten will not go along just to get along, and instead will fight for conservative principles, even if that means going against his own party. Chuck Wooten, a proven leader and defender of liberty. Please visit www.wooten2014.com and please donate to his campaign today. So that aired, uh, or is airing locally down there in Arizona. Um, and I've talked with uh, Chuck Wooten several times, um, interviewed him, been on the phone with him, emails back and forth. He's a really great guy. Um, and I'm just talking from personal interactions. How he would do as a congressman, I don't know. But I will say that his platform is a, is a very firm one. He wants to represent the people. He stands up for conservative values, yes. But the first thing he stands for is being a proper representative. So if the majority of the people don't like a certain bill, he's already stated he'll vote against it as a congressman. That's proper representation, is it not? He's a very moral person. Um, has a lot of leadership ability. And like any good leader, he knows when it's time to be a follower because every good leader knows when to shut up sit down and do what they're told when there's somebody else who needs to take charge even if it's just temporarily because they're a subject matter expert and Chuck is really good about knowing when it's time for him to stand up and take the reins and when it's time to hand the reins to somebody else and sit there and kind of supervise and you know make sure things run smoothly great guy and he's a, he's a firm constitutionalist now, interesting thing about McSally, who uh, is one of the is the key person he's running against, is she has a backing from a lot of big establishment Republican GOP type uh, organizations and people, and they fully support her financially, and they don't like Chuck because he's already said, look, there's some policies. The ER are endorsing things like amnesty and, you know, compromising to a point where it's not really a compromise, it's a capitulation, uh, certain things that the people really are sick of. And there's and with the, within the establishment Republicans, there's some of that going on. And Chuck's willing to stand up and represent his people, even if that means telling fellow Republicans, hey, you may want this. The caucus may want this. The people don't. 
I represent my constituents. And that's uh, that's something to, to, to look at and be thankful. You know, well, I don't want to say thankful for, but be supportive of. Um, give give Chuck a, a look. Um, go over to his website. I'm sure you can do a, do a quick Google, Google search and find him. That's uh, Chuck W O O T E N. And if you live down there in Arizona, you know, take a look at at his site and uh, make up your mind on whether he's somebody you want to get behind or not. Um, and vote your conscience, of course. Now, me, I fully endorse Chuck Wooten for Congress. Even from my little abode in this small, tiny, little, insignificant state known as Texas. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Food for thought. Just my two cents. From my mouth to your ears and as time keeps on ticking 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 into the future I want to go back to Second Amendment since we were talking a little bit about you know how the uh, constitutional carry eventually came about there in, in Arizona and what the, the final catalyst was that kind of pushed it over the edge because they had talked about it for years Eric Reed is the uh, the primary Second Amendment issue writer over at BuzzPo. Um, great guy. Um, well worth reading. Um, just like uh, Matt, and I'm going to butcher his last name. I'm sorry, Matt. Um, but over at, uh, at Brenner Brief, we used to have, or may still have, uh, Br uh, Matt McBrally. McBrally? I know I'm butchering your name, Matt. Uh, I apologize. And we all, But we also have Jack Lee over there as well. I can pronounce that name, that name um, over at Brenner Brief. When when they write, if they continue to still write, um, they're well worth your reading too. But Eric Reed is great. He has pretty close to an article a day over at BuzzPo, usually about uh, Second Amendment issues. And he's the president. Eric Reed is the president of Gun Rights Across America, GRAA. Um, so he's not just. Uh, uh, somebody who's writing and spouting off stuff he actually you know supports what he writes through actions through his uh through his npo there anyway his latest article says breaking although this was published yesterday so it's no longer breaking but as of yesterday it was breaking but anyway obama signs executive order blocking importation of ak-47s indefinitely so if you want a brand new shiny AK-47 you're not gonna get one well I can give just one little bit of note on that AK-47 itself is a little bit outdated what you want folks is called an AKM which is the more modern version but anyway it's just a a slight alteration of the original AK-47, kind of like the M4 is just a s slight alteration to the uh, to the M16. So the same class of weapon. So keeping it within the uh, the generic uh, layman's term, the, the AKM is still t a type of AK-47, which of course was invented back in 1947, which is where. Uh, the name com kind of comes from is uh, the last two digits of the year was first uh, witnessed by our technical intelligence personnel within the, the uh, Department of Defense. Anyway, reading Eric Reed here. Comrade Barack Hussein Obama utilized his phone and pen yesterday and signed executive order blocking importation of AK-47 into United States indefinitely. The executive order from Obama administration is specifically targeting the makers of Saigra rifles and shotguns as well as other companies. The details are below. And then, uh, yes, I read that with a very, very bad Russian accent my apologies anyway Eric Reed then continues to actually quote 
some of the uh, information from the executive order and uh, talks about Kalashnikovs and a couple of other foreign produced rifles that are no longer going to be allowed to be imported into the United States. And then the uh, section number 375 flat out asks on a, like on a fact uh, or a fact sorry if I have a Kalashnikov or if I have Kalashnikov products in my inventory can I sell them? Response if a US person has an inventory of Kalashnikov concern products in which Kalashnikov concern has an interest for example the products are not fully paid for and are being sold on consignment we advise that US person contact OFAC for further guidance on handling of inventory signed July 16th 2014 and then uh, Eric Reed continues here so the order is fairly clear the importation of all ismash produced fire firearms has been blocked by the Obama administration indefinitely the latest infringement raises many other questions though that don't have clearly defined answers as of yet there's still an ample supply of AKs in the US currently and as er Eric Reed states so I'm not certain where the values of the guns will go initially likely they'll increase but at what rate is uncertain it, it is truly very sad or it is a very uh, I'm misquoting here let me just start again reading this so I get the words correct it truly is a very sad day in this country when a wonderful piece of hardware and history is killed by a socialist dictator with, with phone and pen well Eric says with a pen but I have to add the with phone and pen hey comrades I don't need Congress to act I have phone and pen I have Obama phone and auto pen this auto signature it also takes voice memos look remember eat broccoli and then of course it responds with Michelle's voice eat your broccoli Barack anyway snark aside we have to make fun of the phone and the auto pen uh, I'm looking to see if there's happens to be anything else out there to discuss um, if you want to get to the gossip side of things we can go and talk about what's happening over or not happening or whatever the case might be with uh, with Brenner brief news just curious things I'm not on the D no anymore I've kind of been locked out of things going on going on although every time uh, somebody else is taking over the site uh, they immediately start contacting me to uh, to wonder what they you know to ask what they need to do to keep me on as the managing editor there although it, it appears that um, whoever is currently administering the site is doing their best to keep me from doing anything with their team even taking care of any of the writers who are filing stories who can't get them edited by anybody for one reason or another not sure what those reasons are I just know I don't have the ability to even check it out so with that in mind since Sarah Marie quit and threw it to the wind and decided she couldn't be bothered with uh, with her creation anymore it's been through three new owners in a week now granted it was partners that were owning it at first it was two personnel that went in and, and took it and then now it's going to even a, a, another person and this is this person has been a contributor over the site and who knows if she's going to be able to take it over and, and in what direction she'll take it but uh, 
having spoken with uh, with Jennifer Meadows, asking her why she wasn't taking it over, her very simple answer was there were legal issues and legal procedures that needed that she wanted to follow and wanted to take care of and contractual contractual uh, agreements she wanted to enter into regarding the transfer and by speaking with Jennifer by her word is uh, Sarah Marie Brenner seemed very reluctant to uh, to go through with a lot of things she's paying lip service to don't know how true that is wasn't involved in those conversations I just have what Jennifer relayed to me so it makes things interesting so what is going to happen with uh, with Brennan brief news and what's going to happen to all the uh, the contributors and editors uh, whom Sarah promised some kind of compensation for their work will they ever get it that's a good question so We'll just have to sit back and watch, grab the popcorn, and who knows, maybe uh, the, the new owner will uh, will get the site back up and going on, on track or want to get it there and get things legally taken away or taken uh, taken care of. And uh, if she does so desires and wants to bring me back on, we'll see what happens with that. In the meantime, I'm rather comfortable now that I uh, am a contributor over at Buzzpo not you know I'm not saying that I'm not willing to write or edit for anybody else I'm still open for that and I'm still open for you know further things uh, with my new uh, well I'm an independent contractor so I don't really want to say employer but I like to call him that because he's a great guy, but you know, seeing what happens over at Buzzflow, we'll just see what the future brings for now. I'm out there, I'm out on the web, I'm contributing at several places. Keep your eyes out. I tend to post and tweet those things, as well as anything else of interest I come across. So uh, keep on the lookout for me and my work. And again, you can find me always. Now, I don't put anything up every day necessarily, but you can find me over at. Uh, at mental aikido that's uh you can google search mental aikido or you can type in uh pg dash m-a-t-u-s-z-a-k dot blogspot dot com and that'll bring you over there and you can look at what i've been putting up for my own personal mind and everything um some of the things there are more philosophical some are a little bit more personal these days some is a little bit of news but the news and commentary I'm tending to put over in other places that uh, you know will give some amount of compensation for the hard work and better better than just giving the compensation for it will actually make sure that my word is out there for people to see and read and make up their own minds uh, concerning it and after getting informed or getting my two cents on something which of which you know I'm very appreciative and uh, it's a great deal. So to all the other citizen journalists out there, you know, keep the faith. Keep doing what you're doing. We love what you're doing. Um, share your stuff out. Share your fellow conservative, uh, your conservative citizen journalists work out there. Keep working together and we'll keep the people informed and see if we can, can't get our country back on track where it belongs. Well, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, Americans... It uh, it's coming up on close to showtime, and I'm not going to take this for the full hour today. I'm going to cut it a little bit short, if you don't mind. This is Thursday. We'll be back here tomorrow on Friday, and see what more we can discuss. We'll see what comes out later this afternoon in the morning, and and talk about those things. And again, if you want to call into the show, we are live from. 8 to 9 a.m. on uh, well, we're live and you can call in at area code 520 226 8567 if you want to be a guest on the show just go ahead and leave down in the comments 
uh, either on the uh, on the podcast on the on mental keto or the one on YouTube, or you can send me a, a PM on through through Twitter if if I follow you and or back and forth. And uh, we'll see about putting you on as a guest on the show. And tomorrow, I'm thinking I want to discuss a little bit about a book that came out a couple of days ago. And I'm going to see if I can't somehow convince its author to maybe come on uh, and, and talk a couple of minutes with it. But I can't guarantee that. It's going to be short notice. But I'll still discuss that book. Of course, uh, I'm talking about the book Conservative Insurgency by... Uh, by the great and wonderful Kurt Schlichter. And I may even discuss another book I'm currently reading while I'm at it um, by uh, Dr. Alveda King, but I really want to dis- discuss uh, conservative insurgency. So hopefully I remember tomorrow morning. There's a lot uh, between now and then, and I'm sure I will sleep somewhere in there. And we all know what happens when we go to sleep. We dream. We dream of a better America. So you have a great day. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. And uh, enjoy. Bye.